notice that this is important. We are his workmanship. All of this is based off of the workmanship of God. If we are in Christ Jesus, are you in Christ Jesus? Yes or no, if you yes. got saved. Okay, if you are in Christ Jesus, then what God created you to be is to live a life of good works. I think that's the problem a lot of people do not understand. Now, I want you to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and then I also want you to turn to Acts chapter 20, if I recall from my memory. Go to Acts 20 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So this is all of God's workmanship. We should be living our lives doing good works for God Almighty. This is what we call the new nature. So when God put his workmanship in us, he created us to be a new, he put within us a new nature. So let's say this blue line is the new nature. You have to have this. We do not believe in eradication of the new nature. We believe that when you get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, God has to put a new nature within you. If you have a new nature within you, then there is something spiritually in you that will convict you about sin. There's something spiritual within you that will feel grieved about sin. Amen. There will be something spiritual within you that will do good works for Him. Amen. Because why? It is different from your old life. Your old life, when you are lost in sin and in wickedness, you are in the old nature, in flesh and in sin. But when you get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, He puts a new nature within you. So then there is a different outlook of the world. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we'll notice over here, that the Word of God reads at verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, see that in Christ, same thing as Ephesians, right? This is the same language. He is what? A new creature. So that's the same thing as Ephesians 2.10. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. This is the same language here. So people should recognize that. Ephesians 2.10 goes hand in hand with 2 Corinthians 5.17. All things are passed away, so see that your old nature passed away. Behold, all things are what? Become new. You have a new nature. Now, there's another heretical doctrine that you got to watch out. So we deny an eradication of the new nature. But we also deny the eradication of the old nature, which is flesh. So some people will use 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to claim that your old nature is eradicated. But that's not true. What it's talking about over here is spiritually. It never says talking about uh, the, fleshly, the fleshly part, the physical realm. It's saying spiritually what happens? All things are passed away. Why? Because the new nature spiritually comes in. Behold, all things are become new. That's the new nature. But the flesh doesn't go away. Romans chapter 7 is very plain. In Romans chapter 7, Paul says, For I know that is within me, that is within my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Read the entire chapter of Romans 7. Paul realizes that there are two natures within him. Uh, two natures. This one tends to do bad works. This is the old nature. What we believe in is not an eradication of new nature, neither the eradication of of the old nature. Now there are two heresies you got to watch out for. One is called Lordship Salvation. Lordship Salvation believes that the fleshly nature is either eradicated or significantly transformed when you get saved in Jesus Christ. So a lot of the fleshy sins that you used to have as a lost sinner, there should be a significant change. That's what they believe. But no, we deny that. Why? Because of Romans Romans 7 is the proof that we still struggle with the old nature. There's no eradication of the flesh. Because why? We believe the flesh can grow. You can choose to grow the fleshly nature and shrink the spiritual nature. 
That's possible. But there's another heresy which you should watch out for, which is easy believism. What is that? What they believe is that they believe that there's this, they may not know this, but what they're teaching is eradication of the spiritual nature. They insist that what happens when you get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, that there is absolutely nothing spiritual within you. Absolutely no conviction of sin or these sins where the Lord convicts you or even changes you. But you got to realize this. So then sometimes I would ask these people, so then this pedophile who's on death row, so then you're just going to give him the gospel without repentance? That's why repentance is important. Repentance is important. They said, no, you just simply uh, believe and then you're done. But you got to realize this. And this pedophile, he says, so I can just choose to believe on Jesus. But uh, what I did with little kids, I have no conviction about that. I can keep doing what I want to do with that. Would you let that slide? And these people, when I address them that question, they say, you'll never get those kind of people when you witness to them. Those same people are stuck on the internet and don't, are not used to soul winning. Absolutely. That's why. That's why. Right. Chapter 26, verse 20. The Bible says, But showed first unto them of Damascus, and at Jerusalem, and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, and do works meet for repentance. So notice over here that Paul, he gives the, when he is preaching the gospel to everybody, he mentions about doing works meet for repentance. That goes hand in hand with Ephesians 2.10. So Ephesians 2.10 and Acts chapter 26 and then verse 20. Now, there were some people who got upset, for example, about Chick Tracks, where they said uh, in the sinner's prayer, willing to turn from sin. So then some people asked Dr. Ruckman about that. And then uh, Dr. Ruckman, he actually mailed the person the letter and defended Chick Tracks' statement and then mentioned about Acts 26.20. So Dr. Ruckman addressed this against the hyper-dispensationalists who attacked this teaching concerning the gospel. And then Dr. Ruttman pointed out that the wording, Paul is actually stronger than Jack Chick, where he mentions about doing works, me, for repentance. So why is that? Because when we get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, how it happens is this. When we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for our salvation, we get convicted over our sinful condition. Because remember, because of sin, we go to hell. So we want to be delivered from this sinful nature. So what does the Lord Jesus Christ do? The Lord Jesus Christ, what He does is that He saves us from our sins all within a spiritual nature and implants this spiritual nature within us. That's what happens. So at this stage of repentance, you're receiving this from the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit puts that new nature within you. That's why we say works meet for repentance. Why? Because God created you to be that way. How did He create you to be that way? Because He put the Holy Spirit nature inside you. So that's why we are very strong concerning about repentance and doing works meet for repentance. We strongly believe in that. However, the thing is this. This is where the other side uh, does not understand. Lordship salvation, they insist that because of that, that there should be a significant change or a significant improvement from the old nature. But what they don't understand is this. God never eradicated this old nature. Right. He simply put a new nature within us. So over here, this is where your free will comes into play. Amen. So your free will comes into play with choosing this side or this side. Do you understand that? That's why Lordship Salvation is a tendency that was promoted by Calvinist preachers to begin with. Because they have, they have zero problem with eliminating free will. They insist that, well, because God put a new nature within you, you have to live that way. But you got to understand this. You ha we believe differently. You have a free choice to choose this guy or this guy. That's what we strongly believe in. We don't believe in the eradication of the new nature, neither in the eradication of the old nature. If you believe in these two things, that the old nature is not eradicated, the new nature is not eradicated, 
you will easily find the balance and the problem with the extremes of lordship salvation and easy believism. Do you understand that? All right, let's go back to our main text. Some people, you know, one of these cultist, cultic pastors mentioned that D.L. Moody wasn't saved, Billy Sunday wasn't saved, and a lot of these Great Awakening revival preachers weren't saved. Why? Because they preached strong about repentance. They preached strong about repentance in the old Great Awakening revivals. Okay, then you're saying that those hundreds of thousands during the Great Revivals, they were all damned to hell? That doesn't jive with me. Neither, I mean, we're looking at Pauline epistle. Some hyper-dispensationalists want to get around this, but this language is strong. Do works meet for repentance. And Dr. Upman compared that with John the Baptist statement. Fruits worthy of repentance. Right. I mean, that's strong language over there. So we, uh, we do not deny on the doctrine of repentance. Some people online, they, I mean, Ray Comfort was, his ministry was so immature, he thought that I was eliminating repentance in the preach, and so then he posted a video about that, and his ministry sent me a video link to watch that. And then me, I explained, I never denied repentance. Right. Repentance is important, but Ray Comfort's problem is that he's in line with his Lordship Salvation, believing that there should be a significant change in your life. So then it's not possible for a safe Christian to commit really wicked sins or even to stay in the old nature, commit the same old nature constantly in his lifetime. No, we believe that is possible because we believe that this old nature is not changed. You know what changed? Within you spiritually. So that's why we mean old things are passed away, all things are become new. It's spiritually inside you. Why? Because Ephesians 2.10, if you look at that, if this is talking about a spiritual nature, spiritual operation, look back at verse 1. That's what changed. See? Verse 1. You were spiritually dead. That's the old things. That was following the old nature. But then God changed spiritually inside you to not be the old nature anymore. It's a new nature. So you have a new nature. But that doesn't mean the old nature is eradicated. It's only eradicated within you spiritually. Spiritually. But fleshly out here, it did not change. Oh, that's too deep for me. Why do you mean it's too deep for you? If you believe body, soul, and spirit, it shouldn't be too deep for you. If you believe in the doctrine of spiritual circumcision, it shouldn't be too deep for you. See, the problem with both sides is they think these two are one. Then you get confusing. Then you say, where's well, the balance somewhere? No, you just divide it. Rightly divide. That's why we're dispensationalists. True dispensationalists. Truly divide. Rightly divide things. We believe in the division of old nature and new nature. The mo one of the most important doctrines, one of the most important basic doctrines, is actually the two natures. When you know the two natures, it clears up a lot of heresy. It clears up the confusion, confusing debate about repentance. It clears up a lot of confusion about losing salvation, once saved, always saved, etc. Eternal security. All right, let's return to our main text, Ephesians 2.11. Ephesians 2.11. Wherefore, remember, so Paul's saying, that's why remember, remember what? That ye being in time past, so... Previously, in your past time, what were you before you got saved? Before the Lord put this new nature inside you, created on two good works. Gentiles in the flesh. So in the flesh, right, physically, we're Gentiles. We're not Jews. That's what Gentiles mean. Who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. All right, made by hands in the flesh is referring to physical nature. What they were made physically is circumcision. Jews, Jews who are the circumcision physically, they called us Gentiles uncircumcision. That's what we, that's what we were back then. We were Gentiles uncircumcision in the flesh. But the Jews were a circumcised group of people. So that was our past. Our past, we were like Gentiles, we were uncircumcised. But then God did something special at verse 12. Before we come to verse 12, though, let me explain verse 8 through 10. So Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 is powerful 
because it shows that at verses 8 through 9, salvation is not by works. However, we were created unto good works. So then people who try to uh, accuse you of teaching some kind of work salvation, like this new cultist, uh, new IFB cultish preachers saying, you know, oh, D.L. D. Moody, Billy Sunday, and some of these Great Awakening Revival preachers, you know, they were preaching work salvation. Baloney, man. That is garbage. They didn't preach work salvation. They were totally against works for salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. But they could not deny verse 10 over here. Verse 10, you're created unto good works. That can only be possible through repentance. Repentance you know, the problem with people is that they think that you're relying on your works to save you. That is not the case. You're relying on what? Jesus Christ. You're believing. You're trusting in Jesus Christ to get rid of your sins, to cleanse you, to put a new nature inside you. See, that's all the work of Jesus Christ. That's why verse 10 says, for we are his workmanship. That's his work, not your work. So Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 is powerful to convince a person over there that repentance is nothing of your works. You're completely relying on Jesus Christ and let God do the work. And trust me, based off of the book of Hebrews 12, that is his work. His job is to chastise you. Because why? He says the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. He has to chastise you. He has to convict you, grieve you. Some of you people say, I thank God when the Holy Spirit convicted me, right? I thank God when He disciplined me, right? Some of you say that. I thank God when He punished me, right? Why do you guys say that? Because that's God's work. That's His job. Because He's your Father and you're His child. 